Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and on this channel I teach cake artists how to create lifelike flowers and modern cakes using wafer paper. And today, as you can see, I have quite a few cake dummies. These are styrofoam cake dummies because I'm working on a cake, I'm creating a design for a wedding style photo shoot, and I wanted to show you behind the scenes how I go about that and how I decide what size and shape my cake is going to be and how many flowers I need to make to complete my design. So let's do that! And when I start working on a cake, when I create my designs, first thing I think about is how I'm going to deliver this cake. If I need to drive it and for how long, because right now I have this style shoot in downtown Chicago, so it's about hour and a half drive from me and I'm definitely going to use my cake safe. You know that I deliver all my cakes using a cake safe system, but because this is going to be a dummy cake, I don't need to worry about time and making uh, this cake one day prior to event. I can start working on this right now and I have about 10 days to complete the whole design. For my cake safe here on my table I have this chart and I know my cake safe size is small tall so I know that the height of my cake should be 22 inches no more than that if I wanted to put the whole cake inside the cake safe and because it's going to be almost like a summer time so it's going to be hot I wanted to put everything including my paper paper flower arrangement on a cake and inside my cake safe so I'm going to think about like what cake I wanted to make and what shape I wanted to make I have a general idea that I would like to make that maybe a four-tier cake and you can see I usually try to measure to the size of my cake safe so I wanted to make it four tiers and 22 inches four tiers so it's going to be about like five five and a half inches tall and I want my flower arrangement to be on the side between second and third tier that's the idea I have in mind and then I need to see uh, what size cake dummies I have on hand so I wanted my flower arrangement to be on the side and I wanted this to be relatively bold. I do need to confirm this design with anyone, so it's going to be totally up to me to decide what size, what color, everything I want. I have this general inspiration board for our colors, so it's going to be ivory, light blue, pink and like dusty pink colors. So for my cake dummies, I'm going to start with the shapes I like. So I have two options. This is option one and this cake is 21 inches tall, like the sizes. Top tier is 5 inches in diameter and 6 inches tall. Second one is 6 inches in diameter and 6 inches tall. Third one, this one, is 8 inches in diameter and 5 inch tall. And the bottom one is 10 inches by 4. So this is option 1, especially if I want to place my flowers here on the side, like a large flower arrangement here. This might be my preferred option, but I'll show you the second one. And this would be my second option. This cake design is 22 inches tall. Top tier is 4 inches in diameter, 3 inches tall. Second one is 5 inches in diameter, 4 inch tall. This is 6 by 6. And these two are the same. So this is 8 inches by 5 and this is 10 inches by 4. So you can see it's a little bit different, but again, if you think about flower arrangement and if I wanted to have my large flower arrangement here on the side, this might be another great option. Also, if I would not have enough time or enough fund to cover those dummy cakes, I might skip on using the top tier so I can make four tiers like that. But I guess I will go with the first option, so I'll play around and decide which size I'm going to use. 
And to cover my cake diamonds, I'm going to use fondant. Usually I use cyanide fondant or even Wilton, something that's cheaper and something I have. Especially if you have a few buckets of fondant that's expired or close to expiring date, you can use this to cover your cake diamonds. I happen to have this bucket and another one, another bucket of fondant. And for my cover, like for, for the texture, I'm going to go with the rough stone in ivory in light stone colors. So now that I know what shapes I wanted to use, I decided to go with this four tier, which is 21 inch. I'm going to start assembling my cake dummies together. And usually I prefer to use like a bamboo skewer or something that I can poke through several layers of styrofoam dummies. And I start with measuring my cake dummies and making sure that they are centered. And for large cakes or large sizes like this two, I usually use about three bamboo skewers and I just connect two layers together. And if I need some, I usually use my wire cutters or something to help me go through both layers. Then I cut everything I don't need and insert those a little bit below the surface so I can put my next tier on top of that. And for my next two sizes, I would use two bamboo skewers for the third tier from the bottom. So the six inch one and probably one or two bamboo skewers to assemble the top tier together. And I prefer to use bamboo skewers and not to glue my cake dummies together because then it's easier to pull them apart. And sometimes I prefer to keep two top tiers or like three tiers on my display. So it's easier for me to separate those tiers and if I wanted to keep them on display. So you can see here for my top tier, I just making sure that it goes through at least second layer and goes below the surface of my top tier. And my cake dummy is not dirty, it's just stained from using black color. And now the next step what I need to do is I need to cover my top tier and my tops of my cake dummies because that's what I prefer to do first before applying my decoration to the sides because I find it's easier to manipulate my fondant in that way. So I'm just using a piece of old, a little bit dry white fondant and I'm going to roll it out to a thin layer and apply to the top of my kick tier and then to the tops of other tiers. And usually I leave it to set for maybe an hour or something like 30 minutes to an hour if I have time. And then I use a sharp blade. I use this uh, single use sharp blades to cut access fondant and I keep it flush to my kick dummies and I run it around the top of the tier. So I remove the access fondant. And now that I have my top tiers covered, I'm going to start working on the texture and to color my fondant I use these two colors, Ivory Gel by Mary Color and Dusty Pink. And you can see I got different shades of pink and ivory colors or like earthy light brown colors because that's the texture I'm going for. And I left my pieces of fondant, this is satin ice, to sit on my table for about 30 minutes. Also, I have this dry extra thin pieces from the fondant I cut for covering my tops of my cake tears. And now what I'm going to do to get this rough stone texture, I will take a few pieces of dried fondant. It's still soft on the inside, but it's crackly and a little bit textural on the outside. You can see it's crumbling, but that's the texture I'm going for because that's what I wanted my cake texture to look like. And I usually just take a few pieces, I smoosh them together and I start rolling with my rolling pin. Because I wanted this to be my front cover, I wanted this texture to be even, like to have a good flow, I'm going to apply this in one layer. So here you can see me shaping everything together. And now is the time to add color and add texture. I'm adding this thin pieces of ivory fondant 
and to make this piece even smaller I'm using just a cheese grater and applying a little piece of light pink fondant and just grating on top of my white fondant because I wanted to have the different in color and the different in textures and I find this method is very easy to give me like a stone look texture and also I'm going to add sanding sugar because I like how it sparkles and these are edible flakes so anything you have to give the texture you're after and the look you're after especially if you wanted to have something like looking like a rough stone and now this is my secret weapon and that's what I use to roll all my fondant pieces. This is a rolling pin that has uh, like special sirens. I know that my texture on my cake or like my cover on my cake is going to be even. So you can see I'm rolling my fondant and I'm going to use it as my front for my cake making sure that I like the texture and I like the movement of the dry crackly pieces. So now I'm going to take my dummy cakes and because I'm working on a styrofoam, I can put it on the side, it's not a big deal. If you're working on a real cake, obviously you cannot do this, but you can just apply it to the side. Uh, I'm going to do this to other pieces of my fondant. And to make it stick to my styrofoam, I use in a mixture of piping gel and water. So it's a little bit lighter, but it's super sticky. I don't like to use something like a grease because I find it smells very bad. And piping gel is super sticky and I always have it on hand. So that's what I apply with a brush. And then I'm going to put my large piece of fondant on top and make it the front of my cake. And what I need to do is to make sure it is stuck to my styrofoam and that's it. I'm not worrying about this being perfect because that's not the texture I'm after and not the look I'm after. So I'm just making sure that it's stuck to all three layers here. And then I'll take a knife and separate these layers and remove an extra fondant I do not need. The best tool here to make it look even and to make it look cohesive is to use something like a flexi smoother or a fondant smoother and to stick your pieces where you need to stick it and to make everything flush to your styrofoam diamond. So to your real cake, if you make this texture on a real cake, you can do this as well. So. All I need to do is to apply light pressure onto my fondant and cut an excess pieces where I don't need to have it. And you can see here where I have a hole on the side or a piece of fondant is missing. I will cut an excess piece from the top and then I will use a touch of a piping gel and the same piece of fondant and put it inside this hole and use a fondant smoother to make it flush to my cake. And again, because I used one eighth of an inch rolling pin with spacers, it's so easy to stick these pieces together. You just need to make sure that you have a same thickness throughout and remove pieces where you have like a double layer and then smooth it together so it looks like you apply just the one layer. Apply a thin layer of piping gel and here you can see how I'm applying this piece of fondant to the side of my cake when it's standing upright. So you can definitely do the same with your real cakes. Just make sure that your cake is firm enough so you can apply a little bit of pressure when you're placing this fondant texture onto your cake. And I'll continue overlapping my pieces, removing excess where I don't need to and use my smoothers to make it look even and in one layer. And I'll continue working on my cake and covering it in fondant in this rough stone texture. And I'll show you how it looks in a second. And now 
you can see that I covered my cake. This is my front side and on the back side I decided to go with a lighter color in white and no other pieces of ivory or pink. The last step I need to do is I need to fill a few holes where I can see styrofoam. So what I do is I take a piece of fondant, same fondant I used, and I add a little bit of water and mix it to uh, almost like a thick royal icing consistency. And I place this mixture into a piping bag and I use this mixture of fondant and water when I need to cover any holes or if I get any marks in my fondant when I'm covering cake. But here I'm going to use it to fix or to fill some holes where I have it. Like you can see here, I'm applying a little bit of this mixture and just making sure I don't have any access and removing it with my finger. And that's it. I will leave it to dry for a few hours and my cake will be done and ready to be embellished. So here you see the final cake so far. This is going to be part one of the tutorial. Next week I'll show you what decorations I added to this design and flowers I made and how to arrange everything on a cake. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this tutorial. And if you do, please share with your friends. It helps a lot. And I'll see you next week, same time on this YouTube channel. My name is Anna Stashkina. Bye-bye.